Welcome back everyone to the next installment of Chaos Child. I'm back at the map screen and this is really hard to do because they haven't translated the map. Makes it just a little bit tricky, don't you think? So I actually just had to go ahead and look this business up, which is really ridiculous, but we're doing this anyway. So, here. That's looking pretty good. Then... Here, I guess. And then... Here? Oh! It looks like I did it right! We stepped out of the dorm. It would've been better if she switched into something easier to move around in, but she was still in her uniform. And now, I displayed the map on my Pokecom. Thank you, guide I had to check online because I can't read Japanese and I don't know... the map of Shibuya. It was a photo of the map in the club room I'd taken yesterday. If we wanted to get to the Hikari well, we'd have to avoid the monsters appearing from the portal device. The fastest and safest route from Hekiho Dorm 1 to the station was... Kazuki nodded and slowly offered me a piece of dried squid. Did she want me to eat it? I gratefully took the squid from Kazuki and bit into it. The unique smell and taste filled my mouth. As I felt like I was starting to cry, Kazuki grabbed me by the arm. Her tiny body was still shaking. We were going to die, so of course she was. She may have hated to lose, but that didn't mean she wasn't scared. I patted her lightly on the back to encourage her, then started to lead the way. But our plan quickly hit a stumbling block. Our investigation yesterday hadn't found any portals around here, but... Yep, buddy. Ara. We concealed ourselves as we looked down from the pedestrian bridge onto Meiji Street. Five huge dragons, wow, covered in yellow and black scales, were stomping up and down the block. When I looked in the direction of the station, I could see the distinctive light of a portal device 50 meters ahead of us. We went back to the park and hid. So what do we do now? How are we supposed to get to the Hikari well? There wasn't much time left. ヒカリオは駅のすぐ東側。電車は使えない。渋谷駅には電車は来ない。多少無理するしかないかも。正面突破的な。確かにポータル装置の半径 what if, for example, we were to run from our present location, the back of the Miyashita Park Management Office, over the pedestrian bridge, down the stairs, and then to the subway entrance? <laughs> Kazuki tilted her head at me in confusion. Why was it dangerous? Time for a lecture. <laughs> Yeah, I was gonna say, isn't that precisely why we should know how they operate? そういう問題じゃないから。ゲームで戦うのと現実で戦うのは訳が違うんだ。あいつらが本気出した時の足の速さとか狡猾さを僕らはこの身で体感してない。それに仮に路上うろついてる奴らをやり過ごしたとして。地下鉄の駅の中に他の化け物がいないとは限らない。いざそうなった時退路がなくなる。地上に戻るわけにはいかなくなるんだから。それは想定される中で最悪の事態だ。Which was another reason I wanted to approach things from a safe spot. 
If we died before we could use Kazuki's power, there would be no point. We wouldn't be able to save Kurosu or hurt Wakui. <sighs> Kazuki seemed to agree. I loaded the map image back onto my Pokecom. I thought about heading down the tracks from Shinsen, Daikanyama, or Omotesando stations, but that wasn't realistic. Those stations were still running. If one of the staff caught us sneaking on the tracks, we might lose valuable time. Was there any other way? I glared at the map. On the map, at least. The 100 meter radius around the portal device was just a safe zone the police had established. If we used that as a base to look at where in Shibuya was safe to travel, as long as we could get through the Seibo department store right next to the Tatsuya, we could make it out onto Scramble Crossing. And we had Kazuki's d sword to do that. There were no portal devices in Scramble Crossing as of yesterday. A new one might have appeared, but that whole area was a complex maze, both above and below ground, and we might be able to escape. Kokodoro. Kazuki looked at the route I showed her and quickly nodded. The sky was a cheerful blue, but beneath it the buildings were as quiet as the dead. As we ran through the streets, we could hear the distant howls of monsters. I felt like I'd become a character in a video game. We were going through a tiny, tiny safe area, dodging between the various danger spots. And that safe area was just something I'd come up with quickly and hadn't had a long time to think about. There was no guarantee at all if it was actually safe. The stress of knowing that a monster might leap out at us at any minute started to wear me down. But still... We broke open the shutter at Sabo Department Store and ran through the building. Then across the abandoned scramble crossing and under the bridge... And somehow managed to reach the Hikariwo. The door was open wide and I could see many homeless people inside. I hadn't seen this many people together for days. There were hundreds of them. Some were sleeping on beds made of cardboard and others were enjoying a lunchtime banquet of drinks and snacks. All the voices overlapped into a chaotic spiral of noise. I felt strangely at home. Kazuki and I looked at each other. <sighs> we had less than 15 minutes until noon. Kazuki took a deep breath. And screamed into the Hakariwo. Couldn't you just scream like a lot of stickers? Again. And again. All the people gathered at the Hikari while were staring in shock at this teenage girl who shone up out of nowhere and started shouting nonsense at them. All the noise in the entrance hall faded into dead silence. Kazuki's voice was the only thing you could hear. It sounded like some kind of gag. She only screamed the one phrase. Her goal was to imprint it as deeply as she could into the minds of the people here. That was the best plan we could come up with in the short amount of time we had. There might have been a better way, but as exhausted and stressed out as we were, it didn't seem likely that we'd be able to come up with it. Of course, I didn't expect this plan to work, it was barely even a plan at all. But even so, since Kazuki's power couldn't be controlled, there was no telling what exactly it could do. The possibilities were infinite. The same way it had created those portal devices all around Shibuya and the monsters that came with them, maybe it would do something we didn't expect. My hope was that it would create a sumo sticker stronger than all the ones in Shibuya combined. At this point, it was all luck. I had no idea what would happen. Maybe nothing would. There wasn't much time left at all until noon. These last ten minutes were all we had left. All we could hope for was that something would appear that would help us fight Wakue. There was barely anything I could do. Except maybe stay here with Kazuki. <coughs> Kazuki must have heard her throat from screaming so much, she suddenly started to cough and heave. But she kept yelling. <laughs> Kazuki gasped and fell silent. Nothing had happened yet. Nothing happened. That was the reality. There just wasn't enough time for Kazuki's power to create something. 
カスキはよくやったよ。We lost our chance to fight back. And at this rate, we wouldn't be able to save Kurosu either. The regret threatened to overwhelm me. But I couldn't run away now. I had to go. I told myself that I couldn't stop here. ごめんな、カスキ。僕を助けたばっかりに、こんなことになって。Kazuki whispered and softly took my hand. I gripped her hand back. Her warmth made me feel just a little bit better. The only good thing about this was that Kazuki said she'd stay with me until the end. Otherwise, I might have been too scared to go. Now look up. Go to Wakui. That's your last chance to save Kurasu. The homeless men were still looking at us in shock. We ignored them and headed for the elevator, still holding each other's hands. The theater cube was on the 11th floor of the Hikariwo. The entrance hall was called the Sky Lobby, and it was an all glass observation deck. You could look out and see Shibuya from there. Even at this height, I could see how empty the town was. It was like time itself had stopped. Oi, Kimitachi! Jikan giri giri da yo! That's some silhouette. The entrance was empty except for Wakui. He spoke like he was still our teacher, and we were still his students. It pissed me off. He was a bag of shit wearing the skin of a teacher. I hated myself for not seeing it sooner. There was a single chair next to him. Kurosu was sitting in it. Kurosu. She didn't respond. She wasn't tied down or restrained in any way. She was sitting up straight, her posture excellent, with her hands on her lap. Her expression was lifeless. Her eyes were open, but there was no sparkle in them. He couldn't have. Kurosu, what did you do? I don't have to do anything wrong, but. ちょっとばかり過去の傷をえぐってあげたぐらいだよ。お、oh, お、okay. お前、体を傷つけたりはしていないんだ。ちょっとおとなしくなってもらっただけさ。避難されても困るな。My vision turned red with rage. I was overtaken with the impulse to punch him in the face. Kazuki gripped my hand tighter. Our eyes met. She said nothing, but she sadly shook her head. I thought I could tell what she was trying to say. Don't resist. We'd come here to be killed. We would turn ourselves over to Wakui in exchange for Kurasu. We'd run out of ideas. Kazuki's words hadn't worked. Our last hope was to do whatever Wakui wanted. I gripped my fists tightly and swallowed my anger. Wakui chuckled and put his hand on Kurosu's shoulder in a friendly way. That was almost enough to bring the anger back. <laughs> Shit, he'd found out. Kazuki couldn't speak. I had to come up with something. I gulped. Kino みたいなことをされるぐらいなら、死んだ方がマシです。そうしたら楽になれるから。I spoke honestly. So, ka, Naruhodone. Inkai Karano Shiji de Vane, Kimitachio, Koroseto, a Yuarete Nainda. I asked, E Katanga Tadashkunaina Kazukikun Nitsuitewa, Korosna to Yuarete Irunda. Kimia Kichona Sampuru Nandene Miyashiro Kun Nitsuitewa. Ah, Shojiki, Dochi demo Yokatari Sir Kano Jokara, Korostemo, E to you, Kyoka, Morata Vakeda Kara, Bokono, Kibun Shidai to you, Kanjikana. Who was she? Man, this is gonna be a blow. What did he mean it was up to him? Ma, Toria, Miyashiro Kun no Kotoa, Ato de Kangair to Ste. He laughed mockingly. Oh, hello! And took out a sword. Its shape was so awful, so terrifying, that just seeing it made me want to throw up. 
It felt like the physical embodiment of what a piece of shit Wakui was. So this changes things then. I had said, how could Sakuma be a low-level member of the committee when he has mind control? But he has a machine. Wakui is a legit psychic, so maybe it's implied that the other members are actual gigalomaniacs? He put the blade up to Kurosu's neck. That wasn't the deal. Instantly, Kazuki shook off my hand. Oh, and made her own D sword appear. The blade whipped about like a snake and then hardened into a solid, straight form. She flung it, really, just immediately. She flung it straight at Wakui. It was just a quick snap of the wrist with no wind-up at all, but it flew so fast that it created shockwaves as it traveled. Wakui blocked it with his own blade. <laughs> Suddenly and inexplicably, Kazuki stuck out her tongue. What? What was she doing? She looked up towards the ceiling and stuck it out more. She stood up on her tiptoes, her legs shaking like a newborn fawn's and her hands flapping desperately to keep balance. Is he lifting her by her tongue? Cause that's messed up. It was like she was being pulled upwards by an invisible fishing hook that had pierced right through her tongue. Kazuki, <laughs> Tears formed in the corner of her eyes. Her expression contorted in pain. Her eyes looked to me for help. <laughs> I felt something cold run down my back. I had a very bad feeling. There was no time for me to even reach out my hand. Before Kazuki bit off her own tongue. Wow. He just opens with this. Blood spurted everywhere. Her frail body lost its balance and collapsed. I ran over and held her in my arms. Her eyes had rolled into the back of her head and bubbles were pouring from her mouth as her body spasmed with pain. But there was no blood around her mouth. Was that a delusion? So what had I just seen? Confused, I used my fingers to open her mouth. Her tongue was still there. It hadn't been severed. I looked around and couldn't see any pieces of it lying on the floor. Wakui was grinning. Wow, so he could just do that. Sakuma needed a machine. This is going to be a real problem. I didn't even feel any rage. There was only powerlessness and despair. There was no point in even trying to fight him. And I couldn't save anyone. Not Kurosu, not Kazuki, not even myself. Everything was up to Wakui now. All I could do was wait for the moment of my death like cattle. I hadn't even planned on fighting back when I'd come here anyway. I knew I probably wouldn't be able to save Kurosu. That's right. None of this was unexpected. I would be killed and I wouldn't be able to do anything about it. There was nothing more to it than that. No matter how much I had to watch Kazuki and Kurosu suffer, they were all going to die anyway. It didn't matter. Remember how hard this was with Sakuma when we had our sword and our powers? I don't know what we're going to do about this situation. Once you died, the pain went away. I was tired. I just wanted this over with. Maybe I should bite off my own tongue. What? <laughs> Wakui put the blade back to Kurosu's neck. Is this another delusion? We'll find out. The sharp blade sliced open the white flesh of her neck. Blood spurted out like a fountain. I watched it as if in a trance. Kurosu's head had slumped forward, so Wakui grabbed it and lifted it up so I could see her face. Her expression was blank. There was no sign of pain, no sign of resistance. That made me feel just a little better. 
At least she didn't suffer. Wakui's blade was extremely sharp, and it cut through Kurisu's neck like a knife through butter. It didn't seem real at all. It was like watching the death of one of the characters in the game I played with Kazuki. Wakui lifted up Kurisu's head and tossed it away. Damn. But was it real? It landed on the ground in front of me as I lay there, her long hair wrapping around it as it rolled. I hadn't realized her head was so small. As I stared at it, someone walked over to me. I looked up. Kurisu's headless body was standing in front of me. Oh, this is amazing. So it is a delusion, but whoa. The body slowly picked up the head, then went back to the chair. That's creepy. Then it put his head back on the same way a person might put on a helmet. A low moan came from its mouth. Kurisu blinked several times and looked at me. What was going on? What kind of nightmare was this? Her head was connected to its body once more. Kurisu saw me and started to cry. What was happening? Why? You know, I said I really did not want to do another normal path psychological battle. This sucks. The second time? What did he mean the second time? Wakui stuck the blade up against her neck again. Kurosu's features contorted with terror. She just died. You just chopped off her head. So why was she asking me for help? You already did. Don't look at me that way. She screamed and shook as her neck was sliced open. Her screams quickly stopped and were replaced by a sound like air from a leaky pipe. Her head rolled down and landed on the floor with a thud. What was going on here? Why did Kurisu have to get her head cut off twice? Kurisu had nothing to do with this. She hadn't caused any problems for Wakui or the committee. This was an illusion. That's right, an illusion. Just a delusion that Wakui was forcing me to experience. I hope it is. Because if he could just do that, that's freaking nuts. Kurisu wasn't killed twice. She was killed once, and the second was just an illusion. Or maybe she was killed zero times. We'll find out. <laughs> Wakui said something strange. Kurisu's body stood up in answer to her words and picked up her head again. Then she put it back on her body. Was she supposed to be that hero whose head was stuffed with red bean paste? This wasn't funny. It wasn't funny at all. But maybe laughing would have made it easier? My vision blurred. I realized I was crying. <laughs> to be perfectly honest, I thought he was telling me a Shiro to pick it up. I started to hear Kurisu sobs. I felt like I was going to go crazy. I didn't want to see anymore. I wanted everything to go totally black. This was all delusion. That's what I wanted to believe. When would it end? How many times would Kurosu have to have her head cut off before he finally let her die? And this isn't even seeing things in a loop. He's just doing it repeatedly. I don't know what to do about this guy. How many times would I have to see her head cut off before he'd finally let me die? I couldn't take it anymore. 
I was sick of this. If I could just destroy my own mind, then I wouldn't be able to feel anything. I could be at peace until I died. That would be great, wouldn't it? It would be okay, wouldn't it? And suddenly, there was a noise like a trumpet. Did the power finally kick in? Because even the portal device did take some time. That filled the whole Shibuya sky. For the first time, Wakui's expression changed to one of shock, and he looked directly at... The still unconscious Kazuki. That's right. This sound was one I'd already heard once before. What, the baby crying magnified times a thousand? Kazuki's power. Kazuki's words. Kazuki's delusions. Had one become real? The super strong sumo sticker? But if it had, what form was it going to take? Oh, tell me it's a guy. Remember when we had that delusion we thought that Kunosato was a giant monster with a sumo face? Because it had her lab coat and everything? Tell me it's an actual big sumo guy. That would be freaking amazing. If nothing else, I couldn't see anything happening near where we were. Both Wakui and I listened carefully. I tried to listen and see if there was anything to be heard but Kurosu's sobs. I looked around desperately trying to find the sumo sticker. What was it? What had changed? I heard a faint noise, like a rumble in the distance. It was far smaller than the sound of the trumpet I'd first heard, but the floor began to shake in answer to the sound. It wasn't an earthquake. The tremors were spaced too closely. It was outside. Something was happening outside. Ignoring Kazuki, Kurosu, and Wakui, I staggered over to the glass window. And you know it's bad if Wakui's just letting us do it. I wanted to see it for myself. What form had Kazuki's last uncontrollable wish taken? Tell me it's a sumo kaiju, I swear. In some tiny corner of my crippled heart, I thought to myself, then maybe it would be nice if whatever it was destroyed this whole insane world. I realized that I was on the verge of going mad. But even so, I looked outside with a burning hope in my heart. I looked down at the city of Shibuya below. And there, I saw it. I suddenly realized that something was wrong, and I didn't want to admit that it could be real. I thought it might be another illusion of Wakui's, but... <laughs> Wakui had forgotten all about toying with me and was instead gazing in awe at the unbelievable sight before him. From the look of things, it wasn't something he had created. It was real. This was what Kazuki had created. When I realized this, I was awestruck. I mean, the scale was all wrong. Oh, baby! Oh my god! It was holding the cylinder tower of the 107 building like you or I might hold a body pillow. That's my that's my uh, my go-to reference. Like how you or I would hold a body pillow. It was shaped like a human. It was pretty pudgy. No, it was obese. The surface of its body was slick and shiny. Whether it was sweating or that's just what its skin was like, I couldn't tell. It was mostly naked except for a loincloth around its waist. Its black hair was oily and clung tightly to its head. But there was no top knot. Its hair was parted perfectly in the center. Strangely enough, its face had two mouths, two noses, and three eyes. It was not the face of a human. A sumo sticker. Its face was a sumo sticker. The center eye was closed, but the other two were flung wide open. And even at this distance, I could see that the giant eyeballs were constantly moving. Its mouth was continually opening and closing. It didn't seem to be eating anything. Whether it was sleepy or thirsty or maybe even trying to speak, I couldn't tell. Its movements were sluggish and lumbering. It was like a giant monster from a kaiju movie. Yeah, a giant monster, that was the perfect word for it. It was as tall as the 107 building after all. Giant Sumo Sticker Man, at least that was what I decided to call him, had been very interested in his feet since the moment I'd first seen him. If I remembered right, there was a portal device over there and the place was crawling with monsters. Giant Sumo Sticker Man lifted up one of his feet off the ground that flicked it a little. What, did he like, kill a dragon under his foot? It was covered with monsters clinging to it. Oh man! From this distance they looked like tiny little pieces of garbage, but I could still see them. Giant Sumo Sticker Man kept shaking his left leg, but the monsters didn't let go. And then... Was that Doskoi? <laughs> the two mouths howled in unison and slammed its left leg into the ground. Oh yeah, that sumo thing. 
the monsters were knocked off. In fact, he'd crushed the portal device itself. The pyrokinetic had been annihilated when she touched the device, but evidently it wasn't capable of handling something the size of giant sumo sticker man. The horrible portal device that had caused so much pain was crushed beneath the feet of giant sumo sticker man. I started to laugh. This time it wasn't out of resignation. I hadn't gone crazy. Faced with the overwhelming size and scale of Giant Sumo Sticker Man, after all the time I'd spent running and being afraid for the past week, it all just seemed kind of stupid. I could understand why Wakabe was panicking. In the face of something like that, your only options were to laugh, scream, or pretend it didn't exist. Who the hell had dreamed that thing up? Multiple people had to share the same precise image down to the smallest details for Kazuki's words to become real. Yeah, I was thinking that. Was that what they'd taken from Super Strong Sumo Sticker? It was a miracle, created by astronomical odds. The human imagination could be a scary, scary thing. <laughs> Kazuki had woken up and staggered over to me. I quickly grabbed her body to steady her. Her mouth fell open too when she saw Giant Sumo Sticker Man. Are we allowed to look at it? Because if we are, then it's not going to affect Wakui. Although it could still kill him in conventional methods. <laughs> Kazuki closed her eyes tight. Oh my god. As if in answer to her words, Giant Sumo Sticker Man howled once more. That is horrifying! And waved the giant arm knocking down the 107 building tower. As the rubble and dust flew up into the air, Giant Sumo Sticker Man looked at us. Ugh! 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 Did he recognize us? Or maybe Kazuki? Giant Sumo Sticker Man's central eye opened. It was a black pupil with a crimson iris. And the third eye was looking straight at us. When it saw us, a sense of indescribable terror and exhaustion raced through my body. My knees started to shake and I couldn't even stand. My vision blurred, my ears starting to ring, and I felt like I was going to throw up. I imagined every drop of blood on my body freezing. Well, maybe it'll affect Wakui then. My whole body started to shudder from the cold. It was a million times worse than the sumo stickers I'd seen around the city. What happened to Akui? I forced myself to look through my blurred vision. He was kneeling on the floor and vomiting. It was working. Giant Sumo Sticker Man was nullifying his power. Kazuki had gone pale and was clinging to me tightly. I shook her by the shoulders. Kazuki nodded through the pain. She looked back out at Giant Sumo Sticker Man. And also vomited? Her voice was a hoarse whisper. But he heard it. Giant Sumo Sticker Man unleashed a mighty roar from both of his two mouths. That's what both means, it means there's two. And took a slow, ponderous step forward. His blubber shook as he walked. He traveled the distance between the 107 building and Scramble Crossing in only a few steps. Maybe he could sense Kazuki's thoughts. I had no idea how it worked, and I didn't care. At this point, there was no point in even asking questions. I couldn't get distracted. <laughs> Wakui stood up and slowly moved toward us, shaking and wobbling as he moved. I slid between him and Kazuki and pushed him away. He couldn't regain his balance and fell flat in his behind. <sighs> Naruto, so you could. 
あんなものをリアルブートしたのにはそういう理由が<笑>アンチギガロマニアックスの巨人とでも言う機会まったくふざけてるな Watch him just pull a gun. Like, nothing would stop him from doing that. I could still punch him right now, as long as I'm not looking at the giant myself. At almost the exact same moment that Wakui readied his D sword once more. Ugh. There was a roar from below? Excuse me? That shook the whole building. Kazuki yelled it a hundred times, don't tell me there's more. I looked down to see what had happened, and Giant Sumo Stickerman was lying on top of an elevated section of the Yamanote railway line. He must have tripped on it. He grabbed the side of the station building and used it to help himself up, crushing the tracks in the process. And then he moved forward and slammed himself into the side of the Hikariwo. The Hikariwa was struck with the force of hundreds, no, thousands of Yokozunas. The body slams continued, again and again. The building itself began to buckle, and the shockwave sent us to the floor. The glass broke and poured down on us. I felt a cold wind on my skin. When the shaking finally stops, I looked up to see what had happened to Kazuki and Kurasu. I was relieved to see that they hadn't fallen out of the window. But Wakui was still alive. He'd stood up before we had and was cursing us in rage. It was another huge shock. Wakui and the rest of us were knocked away. I was worried that the Hakariwa might break. Wakui didn't even have the energy left to keep up his good teacher act. He readied his D sword, his face flush with anger. He attacked us in desperation, even though it was obvious he could barely stand. He was obsessed. But I wasn't ready to give up yet either. We finally had our own trump card, Giant Sumo Sticker Man, and I was every bit as obsessed with killing Wakui. <coughs> I grabbed Kazuki's body in my arms and. <laughs> leapt outside through the broken window. But we're on the 11th floor, dude! <laughs> the ground got closer and closer. Did we just leave Cursor there? I was scared. If I hit the ground at this speed, my bones would shatter, my body would be crushed, and I'd die in a spray of blood and organs. There was nothing to support me, nothing to grab onto, unless. Sticker man catches us. I couldn't keep my balance in midair. I clung tightly to Kazuki. <laughs> what a gamble. Kazuki quickly understood and looked around for it. There was no need to look. Giant Sumo Sticker Man was right under us, clinging to the Hikariwo building. He twisted his neck to look at us. A huge flappy hand was extended beneath us. This is insane. And caught us. It was soft like a cushion. We were still going pretty fast, though, so the impact was intense. But at least we were alive. I looked up. Ugh. I could see his arm, his shoulder, and his giant sumo sticker face. Seen from close, it made me feel even sicker. A part of me wanted to jump off and die rather than stay here. I closed my eyes, gritted my teeth, and did my best to fight the impulse. I could hear Wakui's voice from above. I looked up and saw that he had jumped out of the building too. So Kurosu's just up there. Wow! Wow! <laughs> the absolute madman! A huge bird, like something out of an encyclopedia of dinosaurs, had flown from out of nowhere and Wakui had grabbed onto his leg. This is great! It slid through the air towards us. <laughs> It was pink and almost completely featherless. I could tell by comparing its size to Wakui's that his wingspan was over 5 meters long. There was no such bird as that, and even if there were, it wouldn't live in the middle of Tokyo, and even if it did, it wouldn't be taking orders from Wakui. Wakui's delusions had created it. 
Wakui flew past Giant Sumo Sticker Man, slicing into its shoulder with its D-sword. Its two mouths moaned in pain. Instead of blood, white sumo stickers spurted out of the wound. The wind carried them across the Shibuya sky. Wakui spun around in midair for another attack. This is the greatest. Kazuki. Then I realized that Kazuki was holding the sides of her temples in pain. That makes sense. Her body was so hot in my arms that I thought I might get burned. She was feeling weak. I wasn't sure if it was because of Wakui's attack or the fact that she'd used her power. Or maybe it was because she was giving orders to Giant Sumo Sticker Man? I screamed, unable to stand seeing her in that state, but she immediately shook her head and looked at me in desperation. She spoke the words clearly. Could I do it? Kazuki grabbed me by the necktie as if to urge me on. She gritted her teeth and whispered in my ear through the pain. I could do it. I could fight. In fact, I had a monster at my disposal that was capable of ripping Wakui in two, which meant I would use that power to survive. Kazuki nodded and Giant Sumo Sticker Man's fingers closed around us. He brought his hand up and sat us on his shoulder. This is freaking crazy. It was a little more unstable than his palm, but at least here I wouldn't have to look at his face. Just as I thought, moving up here made me feel a lot better. I had Kazuki summon her D-sword and plunge it into Giant Sumo Sticker Man's neck, giving us support so that we wouldn't fall off. Wakui was getting closer. He wasn't our club advisor or anything else. The Committee of 300 could go to hell. <laughs> this is great. Giant Sumo Sticker Man's arm flew forward. He smashed Wakui with an open palm, the same way you'd swat a fly. Wakui landed hard near Memorial Park. The impact could easily have killed him. But... He wasn't normal, so I wasn't going to show any mercy. Are you serious? <laughs> wow. Miyashi I think this is the first time Miyashiro is going to be directly and intentionally responsible for killing someone. <laughs> w well, there was Sakuma. In a single bounce, Giant Sumo Sticker Man covered the distance between here and Memorial Park. He could jump an amazing distance for a fat man. Kazuki and I clung as tightly as we could to the D-Sword in order to avoid falling off. He landed hard, crushing the area where Wakui had fallen. The impact kicked up rubble and dust around his feet. Did we win? I looked down into the dust. This is impossible! Wakui's D-Sword flew up through the cloud. It was so fast that there was no time to dodge. The sharp blade stabbed into my shoulder. That is the shot of a lifetime. Who can throw with that accuracy? It tore through flesh and bone. The pain was incredible. I felt like I was going to pass out. Kazuki held me up. She grabbed my hand and placed it on the D-sword. It was just barely enough to keep me from falling. I bit my lip to get through the pain, and looked in the direction the sword had come from. Wakui was down there, covered in blood and looking up at us in fury, just a little from the spot where Giant Sumo Sticker Man had landed. <laughs> Giant Sumo Sticker Man flicked Wakui away with his foot. This is brutal. Wakui's body flew like a ping pong ball. At that point, the fight was over. But I wasn't done yet. Wow, no mercy. Oh! You've got to be kidding me. By weapon, I meant the Shibuya Earthquake Memorial, which had survived the impact of the jump and was sticking out the ground near Giant Sumo Sticker Man's feet. He reached down and yanked it out of the earth. His eyes locked on Wakui as he flew through the air. Home run? 
impale him with a memorial? <laughs> Giant Sumo Sticker Man flung back the arm holding the memorial. <laughs> Kazuki's will and mine dwelt within the Giant Sumo Wrestler's body. His arm snapped forwards. Oh! The memorial was flung like a spear. The spear instantly crossed the speed of sound. This is nuts. With a sonic boom, it smashed straight into Wakui and obliterated his body. Cold as ice! And that was the end. And Kurosu is just in the building. The D sword in my shoulder disappeared in a halo of light. Wakui was dead. He was dead as hell. He never had a chance. It was a one-sided slaughter. And now there's going to be 299 members of the committee pissed at us, which is really not good. <laughs> the giant sumo wrestler howled into the open air. He was a destructive monster. He was a brutal giant. We had created something that threatened to destroy the balance of the entire world. I looked up at the Hikariwo and saw Kurosu waving at us from the shattered sky lobby window. Man! Also, spoilers, she's a, a psychic. Is she gonna get sick? <laughs> for better or for worse, both Kazuki and I had survived. What awaited us now was a hell worse than anything we'd gone through so far. Yeah, kill monsters, I guess? We might have brought this terror not only to ourselves, but to the entire world. Nothing about the world would ever be the same. And we'd be left to make our way in it, like lost and frightened children. And we did all this to kill one guy! Ah! <laughs> Even without the Committee of 300's decision, Kazuki and I were enemies of the world for creating such a place. Maybe it would have been better if Wakui had killed us. There was that, and then the fact that I had no idea what we were going to do next. And then the fact that my shoulder was still bleeding and it hurt like hell, but... Kazuki was in my arms, looking relieved and at peace. So at least for this one moment, I could be grateful for the warmth I felt. That's what I thought. That was awesome! That's how this ends? That was awesome! And you know what else? I'll show you. <laughs> oh yeah, that was a load of fun. Okay. Deep sky and baby. And now we have a hidden story. Yeah, pandemic call was what we beat, but okay. Hidden story. That's right. I found all the branches, but... True. Oh, and what's that on the right side of the screen? Hmm. It's Serika's D-Sword. Tips? I'm missing one tip, two tips. That's it, two tips, I think, in the whole game. I think that might be it. And... I guess there's one picture down here. And one more page's worth of pictures. And music? One. Two. Three. That's it. There you go. We are so close. All that is left now is the true path with no delusions, and as far as I know, no decisions. We are going to watch ourselves the final ending. But for now, it is time to stop the installment. Well, we certainly made a lot of progress today, didn't we? We had our confrontation with Wakui, and it was terrible. I don't know if he has the power to kill Kurosu and bring her back to life. I suspect he doesn't. Or was he deluding us by making us see her body? 
Was he deluding Kurosu herself? Was she genuinely asking why she was alive? I don't know, but thank goodness that's over. That guy had power for days. And then we summoned a freaking kaiju and killed the shit out of him. That was ridiculous. And now we're enemies of the world because we literally created a monster. And that's after creating loads of monsters. It's just... Now that we've unlocked the true path, I wonder what that means. I'm not loading anything in the story. I'm just selecting true. So what is it coming off of? Does it come off of the main story at all? I don't know. I guess we're going to have to find out. Until next time, everyone.